Good morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. My sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sinfulness before we celebrate these sacred mysteries. We're dispersed in many ways, Heavenly Father. Help us to be strong in our faith. Help us to find that virtue and that powerful gift of the Spirit fortitude in times of great need. In our need for mercy, we cry to you now fervently, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty and merciful God, that we may in truth receive a share in the resurrection of Christ your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Let us now be comfortable wherever you may be and listen to God's word proclaimed. Our first reading today is taken from the New Testament book, Acts of the Apostles. The crowd in Philippi joined in the attack on Paul and Silas, and the magistrates had them stripped and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After inflicting many blows on them, they threw them into prison and instructed the jailer to guard them securely. When he received these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and secured their feet to a stake. About midnight, while Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God as the prisoners listened, there was suddenly such a severe earthquake that the foundations of the jail shook. All those floors flew open. The chains of all were pulled loose. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, thinking that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted out in a loud voice, do no harm to yourself, we are all here. He asked for a light and rushed in and trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? They said, believe in the Lord Jesus and you and your household will be saved. So they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to everyone in his home. He took them in in that hour of the night, bathed their wounds. Then he and his family were baptized at once. He brought them up to his home and provided a meal with his household rejoiced at having faith in God. The word of the Lord. Our response to God's word, your right hand saves me, O Lord. Your right hand saves me, O Lord. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart, for you have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I will sing your praise. I will worship at your holy temple and give thanks to your name. Your right hand saves me, O Lord. Because of your kindness and your truth, you have made great above all things your name and your promise. When I called, you answered me. You built up strength within me. Your right hand saves me, O Lord. Your right hand saves me. The Lord will complete what he has done for me. Your kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. Your right hand saves me, O Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to the evangelist John. Jesus said to his disciples, Now I am going to the one who sent me, and not one of you asks me, Where are you going? But because I told you this, grief has filled your hearts. But I tell you the truth, it is better for you that I go. For if I do not go, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world in regard to sin and righteousness and condemnation. Sin because they do not believe in me. Righteousness, because I'm going to the Father, and you will no longer see me. Condemnation, because the rule of this world has been condemned. Gospel of the Lord. This morning's gospel portrays by the gospel writer John, Jesus somewhere in the midst of his discussion with his disciples, ministering to them, teaching them, and he talks to them about the time when he must go. 
In order for us to reflect on the resurrection and the impending ascension that we are celebrating in just a few days, we need to understand that Jesus really had to speak frequently with his disciples and to teach them. The teaching isn't just a matter of taking data in and mastering it. It's a matter of accepting it. I think all of us in our lives have that experience. We learn things sometimes much more slowly than we think. We can gather facts pretty quickly today, probably quicker than many would like to suppose, but what do we do with them? For instance, one of the great treasures and gifts of mankind is freedom. But do we really understand what freedom is? For many people, it's very simple. I get to do whatever I want, wherever and whenever. That's not freedom. That's called license. With freedom comes all kinds of aspects. The right to choose, but that's only one part. Do we have the freedom, if you will, to choose to do wrong? Well, if we follow the world that Jesus is talking about, that he's going to leave, we do. Look at the world in which you now live. It's the environment where we live now. We feel the tension and the difficulty more than we normally would. But how many of us understand that choices have powerful affects and effects, not only on self, but on others? And so the call of Christ isn't just when things are going rosy, but when things are going perhaps in a way we don't like. It makes us uncomfortable. And so we need to re-understand what freedom is of all. There's responsibility. There's being in the right place. For instance, does a person have the right to be in a place where they're going to harm others? Or harm themselves? I think the obvious answer is for those who believe in the Lord, <clears throat> we owe the answer. For others, it's a matter of doing whatever, whenever. <clears throat> For example, one of us realized that a driver's license is not a human right. It's an earned right. Hmm. You ever go to a hospital? I'm sure you have to visit. You'll notice different signs there. Physicians only. Visitors way over there. And in the middle there, you'll see a claim for clergy. With well, those clergy, they get away with murder. Hmm? I wonder why. I wonder if that's really going on. Staff members of a hospital, doctors and nurses, are all necessary, especially the doctors. They have to diagnose, and then the rest have to help treat it. What are they doing? They're defending the right to life. But they've earned that privilege right. Privilege rights protect others' rights. So therefore, we need to be careful, especially grown-ups, how we deal with our decisions, how we speak with the young, because we often model the opposite of what we say. And that's what Jesus is trying to tell the disciples today, and you and me, maybe learn. God bless you. As we pray today, we pray in a special way for the needs of so many. And as we say in response, Lord, hear our prayer. First of all, for all those who are suffering from COVID-19 in many ways and shapes, for those who are caring for those people who are suffering, and especially the front line people in hospitals caring for those many people who have this disease, not only in our country, but in our area, but certainly throughout the world. And certainly for all of our doctors and nurses, for all working in our hospitals, all their support staff highly necessary for them to complete their work, for those who are working in pharmaceutical research, for those who are working uh, in the realm of the Pure Food and Drug Administration, the tests that they do will be prompt as possible, scientifically and correctly and with the proper ideas of freedom and not wrong choices. We want to pray for all those who are transporting the goods that are so necessary, for all those who are 
doing trucking work and for certainly people in our grocery stores, for all those who are part of the food chain, there are many who are involved in this, for those who are also working in other first essentials of, of work, such as the police and the fire personnel, for all those who are doing those work, and there are many of you out there, hard to remember all of you, but for all of you, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all families, for all those who are dealing with, especially those who have compromised immune systems, that they too may find the safety they need and the security they need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who in a special way are gathering this week, hopefully with some semblance of their family and so forth, and that they may have some time of leisure and some time of being with one another, a time of perhaps less tension if possible, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. There are the needs of many that <clears throat> we all want to think about in so many ways. And now for a few moments, quietly, let us think of those who are in great need. Let us pray to the Lord for them, quietly. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And finally, for many people, ourselves included, who have to make decisions that affect and affect others, and realize that virtually every grown-up is in that position, so let's pray that our decisions will be for the good of the whole, and not just the proverbial me. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, you have heard the prayers we have said. Strengthen us by the power of your grace and the wonder of your spirit within us, so that we may live the life of Christ as he's taught us, to the best of our capacity, with our failures and our successes. And this we ask with the intercession of Mother Mary, Queen of Peace, and St. Veronica, through Christ our Lord. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. <clears throat> and by the mystery of this water and wine, <clears throat> may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become for us our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Watch me, Lord, from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these paschal mysteries so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our ending joy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and never pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exult in your praise, and even heavenly powers with angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, and we join them in prayer. <clears throat> holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. May holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down upon them the Holy Spirit, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, 
He took bread, giving thanks, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup. Once again, looking up, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection <clears throat> until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, O Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. <clears throat> Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring you the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our bishop, and all the clergy. Today, especially, see and do this sacrifice of praise of special intentions asked by Jim and Pat Hamill. As well, remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, for their blessed spouse, St. Joseph, with the blessed apostles and martyrs, and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be go heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and second coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to his apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. <clears throat> the peace of the Lord be with you always. And now, wherever may you be, let us share a sign of our Lord's peace, perhaps thinking and praying for those you miss the most because of the particular situation we're in, for all those who know who are in great need of the Lord's healing touch. <laughs> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy, you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers, that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth in peace. The Mass is ended. Once again, a reminder that tomorrow is the day before our Ascension Thursday, Holy Day of Obligation. So there will be no Mass in the morning. Mass will be celebrated tomorrow night at 5.30 p.m. in anticipation or the vigil of Ascension. And then on Thursday morning, we'll resume the regular schedule at 9 with the Ascension Mass on that day. Have a good and very safe day.